Okay guys, I'm Arthur and you're watching Dirt Hammers Off-Road Media. Hey, today we're gonna get those Poison Spider uh, deferential covers uh, installed. Um, if you recall, I did a video where I painted those, kind of did a, um, just like everybody else does, how they custom paint the uh, Spider logo. So we'll put that link up here. Make sure you check out that video. Uh, I think they turned out really good. And they're gonna look really cool underneath the Jeep. Uh, that's where I'm at right now, underneath the Jeep. And we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you how to change your deferential cover. We're gonna do the demonstration on the uh, rear of the Jeep on the Dana 44, but this process is the same for the Dana 30 and the Dana 44. So it's real simple. Uh, I just have finished breaking in the Yukon uh, 456 gears and the Yukon Grizzly lockers front and rear. So this is a great time for me to change these covers, um, inspect the gears, uh, see how everything's going in there. I expect no issues. Everything's been running fine. There's no abnormal noises or sounds. Uh, the lockers are breaking in nicely. They're actually have uh, gotten a little quieter and, and uh, behaving a lot better. So this is a good time to inspect that, um, get that break in gear oil out of there and get some new gear oil and new differential cover. So stick around and let's jump into this. Okay guys, before we get started, uh, let's just talk about a couple things that you're gonna need to do this uh, process with. You're gonna need a half inch socket, um, half inch ratchet, maybe even a breaker bar and a small extension. You can use a cordless impact if you wish, that's fine. Um, but half inch drive, um, not half inch drive, but half inch socket, um, extension, breaker bar, and a ratchet. Uh, you may need a uh, plastic mallet, uh, maybe in a, a small pry bar. Sometimes the, the uh, factory covers can be just a little tough to pop off. Uh, you're gonna use your 3H drive ratchet and extension for the uh, drain plug on the front and rear differentials. You're gonna need an oil drain pan. Uh, make sure you have some kind of gasket scraper or some kind of wire wheel, something that you're gonna have to clean the housing with and get all the old silicone or gasket material off. So that's gonna be very important for your uh, installation to make sure you get a good seal on the new cover. Of course, uh, brake cleaner. A lot of guys like to um, spray inside the housing and the gear set and kind of wash it off and, and get uh, any kind of settlement and, and particles out of the bottom of the differential. Um, that's kind of optional. You don't have to do it, but it's a good little, uh, good little tip. And you gotta make sure you have gear oil. Uh, I'm going back with the ADW90 uh, since my vehicle is strictly something we use for exploring, uh, trails, stuff like that. I don't do any towing. Uh, I think guys that do uh, towing, any kind of towing, would probably want to run up and grab the uh, maybe a 75, 140 uh, gear oil. And uh, just pick a gear oil that's, uh, that's uh, meets your liking. I know a lot of people are brand specific. Uh, you just make sure you get a good quality uh, GL5. Um, I kind of tend to over maintenance things a little bit. So for this gear oil, I'm just, I just went and bought O'Reilly's house brand. I'm gonna change it frequently anyways, so it's not that big a deal. And you're gonna need some Teflon tape or some kind of pipe sealant for the uh, oil field plugs. So let's get started. Okay, so on the deferential in the rear and front, you'll have a uh, drain plug. Uh, located here you can just take a I'm just going to use a uh, small breaker bar and a little small extension 3 8 drive and they can be pretty stubborn they're usually sometimes pretty tight get that broke loose switch over to the ratchet got our pan in position so The goal is not to drop it into the uh, into the oil pan. Okay. Gear oil looks nice and good. No water, obviously, in it. So we're just gonna let that drain. Um, you probably won't get all of it to drain out. Uh, once you crack the, uh, once we take the cover loose, you'll probably still have some drain out. So always keep your pan underneath there. One thing that's very important that you wanna pay attention to is the, is the uh, drain plug is a uh, magnet. So what you're looking for, having this real kind of fine pasty stuff is pretty normal. 
This might be a little excessive at the moment just because it was a new gear set. Uh, but this is pretty much normal for any kind of gear set break in. What you what the, would concern me if I had large chunks, had large pieces, but as I was moving that stuff through my fingers, it's just um, just a real fine paste. So just make sure you um, understand what you're looking at there. And if you're finding large flakes or chunks, large pieces of metal, uh, might be an indicator that you are fixing to find a problem when you go to pull the cover off. So just get that cleaned up best you can. You don't have to um, get it spotless. Uh, just get the heavy stuff off of it that was on there and, uh, and it's doing its job. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and we're just gonna start cracking some of these loose. Like I said, if you have a half inch drive cordless impact, might things, make things a little easier, but I have one. I just tend to be a little old school and like hand tools. Now that you get all the uh, fasteners out, leave at least one or two or so up at the top. So the cover doesn't just surprise you and fall and uh, gear oil goes, ever, goes everywhere. But as you can see, my cover is already loose. It was recently off and uh, we used the uh, gasket that came with the uh, Yukon gear set. So I'm hoping I can reuse that gasket, but uh, if not, we will go with the supplied uh, silicone that Poison Spider supplied with their deferential cover. Now, if you choose to, now's the time to kind of wash the housing out a little bit of uh, brake clean or some parts cleaner. You always end up with a little bit of a byproduct or a little bit of a sludge uh, down in the bottom. It wouldn't hurt just to rinse it. You ain't got to get crazy. That's probably good. We'll rinse the bottom out a little bit. Now you'll want, you know, that'll dry pretty fast, pretty quick, and then you just kind of wipe out the bottom. Show you that. Down in the bottom, it's usually, um, you know, there's a little bit of a crevice there that kind of, You can see some of that black stuff. It's a little bit of a byproduct from normal wear and tear, oil breakdown, stuff like that. But the gear set looks like it's wearing pretty good. Everything's good and clean. The Yukon locker, no way of really inspecting it, but uh, she's working and doing her job. That should do it for cleanup. Now's a good time. Let's go ahead and put our drain plug in. I went ahead and wrapped it uh, about two wraps of some uh, Teflon tape. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the gasket instead of uh, doing a silicone. So I got the gasket on the cover, got one bolt through, and we're just gonna try to ease this up on here and get at least one bolt started.
okay guys just a couple things the um deferential cover bolts i believe are 30 to 40 foot pounds so uh, once you get the bolts snugged up make sure you torque those uh properly and kind of do a crisscross pattern kind of jump from one side to the other make a star however you want to do it uh, just make sure they get uh, tightened down uh, equally into the proper torque spec um, so that's pretty much how you install it now we're going to fill it and just a couple of notes on this the poison spider deferential covers um, probably are a little bit more volume. The cover is probably just a little bit um, deeper than the OEM cover, but the fill holes are pretty much spot on uh, identical. So where I'm going with this is some deferential covers have a really high um, fill hole. It could be almost to the top of the uh, deferential cover. So be just a little cautious if you have those kind of covers, make sure you just um, measure out the proper uh, amount of deferential fluid that you need and that's what you're going to use. I will actually put down in the description area, I'll put the um, capacities and some other maintenance tips down in the description, but I'll have all your deferential capacities listed below so you can properly measure those out if you need to. Some deferential covers have two. They'll have a actual oil level dipstick that comes out up at the top and then somewhere in the middle of the deferential cover will be their uh, fill hole for the proper level. We don't want to overfill them. Um, that's probably not going to be a case here with the uh, spider covers. Uh, if there is any capacity difference, it's probably in an ounce or two uh, ballpark area. But if you got those deferential covers, got the real high fill and you fill it all the way to the top, you don't leave uh, much room in there for uh, heat expansion, uh, the deferential to breathe, things of that nature. And it may just start to push some of that excess uh, gear oil out the vent. And we don't want that to, don't want that to happen. It just makes a mess. So. Let's properly fill this thing up and uh, we'll be wrapping this up. Okay, so now we're gonna start filling it. The um, rear differential holds a little over two quarts, it's like 2.3 quarts. And again, I'll put that information uh, down below. But you can use, uh, make sure it's just a GL5. Uh, I'm using the 80 weight, uh, 80 weight by 90. And um, if you're towing, like I mentioned before, a lot of guys may use the 75, 140, but use whatever brand you like. I just went with Master Pro from O'Reilly. Like I said earlier, I over maintenance things and um, this stuff will, won't uh, be in there that long. I'll end up changing it out frequently. Just part of maintenance, uh, inspection for water, things of that nature. So we're just gonna squeeze and fill this up. And we're gonna try to get a little over two quarts in there. A lot of times after I fill them up, I like to drive them and um, let them, once I make a trip around the neighborhood or something and drive them, I like to let them sit for a little while. And then I'll go back and check the fluid level and make sure I, that I perfectly have it filled. Um, just a little double check. Okay guys, so there's the video. Uh, it's real simple. It's a little dirty job, stinky, but it's a simple job to do. You can do it yourself. Um, help you keep up the maintenance on your Jeep. Maybe save you some little money by doing it yourself. And um, hopefully you enjoyed the process. Uh, I know I did. And uh, if you'd like, share the video. Leave a comment below. I'd like to hear some information. Um, maybe if there's some tips uh, that you have on the way that you've serviced your deferentials or uh, if you have a certain brand of deferential fluid or uh, maybe you prefer the 75 W140 or the 80 W90, drop those comments below and uh, make sure you subscribe and like. Thanks guys.